Let me introduce to you Shantae Moore. Shantae is not only gorgeous, but she can actually chante. <laughs> Shantae is how you say sing in French. So what a name that is fitting for her. Okay. Born on February 17th, 1967. She's a jack of all trades, a singer, songwriter, TV personality, and author. She's been in the spotlight since the early nineties. Michael Molden, who used to manage Shantae, once said, I think Shantae exemplifies the title unsung. And boy, was he right. I agree. Despite her incredible talent, it's a mystery why she didn't get showered with gold and platinum plaques. She got a voice that can rival the likes of Minnie Ripperton and Mariah Carey, according to her manager, Cheryl Cobb DeBrose. And may I add, she has a silky, smooth voice, kind of like a Sade also. I love the jazzy tunes that she has to her voice, but she can whistle also like Mariah Carey. Okay. And let's not forget about Corrupt from the Dog Pound, who said her voice sets her apart from the rest. Despite her biggest hit being Shantae's Got a Man, it's puzzling why she didn't conquer the music industry. But one thing is for sure, she's a down-to-earth woman who's just like us, despite her fame and talent. And in this world of carefully crafted public personas, that's quite refreshing, right? But there are plenty factors into why I think her career didn't pop off like it should have. Starting with a label who didn't fight hard enough for her. And of course, Diddy. Diddy strikes again, y'all. He did our girl Shantae so dirty. It had me seething, so I can only imagine. This man is really a real life supervillain. And in this video, we will talk about how he stole what would have been probably her biggest hit and gave it to JLo. He bullied his way into getting anything that he wanted, with Shantae being the one to deal with it. We'll get into all of that and more, but first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Korean Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And if you're already subscribed, please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now let's get into this video. Let's start with her childhood, okay? In the very beginning. In the vibrant city of San Francisco, California, Shantae was born to parents who are Christian evangelists, and she is very, very religious. Singing in the church was as natural to her as breathing, thanks to her mom, who was not only a singer, but also her first music teacher. Gospel legends like Tremaine Hawkins and Andre Crouch were her childhood inspirations. And a twist of faith at the tender age of 22, while she was strutting her stuff in a beauty pageant, Louis Silas, a big shot from MCA Records, spotted her. He was so impressed that he signed her up for his label. In 1992, she released her debut album, Precious, which struck gold. She didn't stop there. Albums like I Love Supreme and This Moment Is Mine, featuring the golden hit Shantae's Got A Man, followed suit. In 2004, she bagged the Soul Train Music Award for Best R&B Soul Singer from the catchy tune Contagious. The same year, 20th Century Masters honored her with the Greatest Hits collection. Not one to rest on her laurels, she signed up with Arista Records and lit up the Las Vegas Strip and Bali's Jubilee, directed by Frank Gaston. Comment below your favorite music from her. If you're not too familiar, mine is Love's Taken Over. It's just so smooth. She filmed it in Paris. It's just so jazzy also. It gives you the vibes of like Sade, really good. And I also love Old School Loving. With her spectacular vocal range, Shantae is part of an elite club of songbirds that includes Denise Williams, Mariah Carey, and the late Minnie Ripperton. Her unique voice has graced the soundtracks of films like Waiting to Excel, Beverly Hills Cops 3, How Stella Got her groove back, Romeo must die, and Big Mama's house. My heart is filled with joy and excitement for life and my music, she says with a beaming smile. I have so much more to give to my fans, more than what meets the eye and the ear, more of the same and even more than what you expect, end quote. She's a woman of many talents. She penned an autobiographical self-help book, Will I Marry Me?, where she shares her journey of self-discovery dealing with the loss of her mother and older brother. These series of EPs reflects where I am now in my life and where I want to be in the future. I'm learning to let go of old mindsets, the negativity that weighed me down so I can become the best version of myself, she says. I feel stronger, clearer, and I'm back with a new determination. I am the phoenix rising and I'm living my life again, end quote. In 2013, Shantae joined the cast of the reality TV show R&B Divas Los Angeles alongside Kelly Price, Don Robinson, Michelle Lay, Lil Mo, and Claudette Ortiz. 
The show was filmed throughout the year and premiered in the summer. A second season followed in 2014. Now in terms of her personal life, let's take a trip down memory lane to 1991 when Shantae Moore was just starting out in the music industry. Amid her rising fame, she found solace in the arms of a childhood friend. They had shared their first kiss at the tender age of 13, a sweet memory that made them decide to tie the knot. However, Shantae reveals in her 2014 self-help book, Will I Marry Me, their love story didn't have a happily ever after and I couldn't find any photos of this first love, okay? In one of her interviews for Unsung, Shantae opened up about this period in her life. After being in a couple of relationships that weren't so great, I was a bit scared of love, she confessed. So I thought, why not outsmart it? I'll marry my best friend. Yet, as fate would have it, they ended up parting ways. In 1993, Shantae's life took another turn when she crossed paths with actor Kadeem Hardison. While still in the process of her divorce, she found herself falling for Kadeem. Tragedy struck in 1995 when her mother passed away on her brother's birthday, January 25th. But amidst the sorrow, a ray of joy came into her life in 1996 when she and Kadeem became parents to a beautiful daughter named Sophia Hardison. The couple secretly exchanged vows in 1997, only to part ways in 2000. The reason for the breaking up according to R&B divas and other sources is that she was super religious and Kadeem was an occultist who was not really into you know Jesus and all that stuff and one thing about Shantae she talks about Jesus a lot okay she's really serious about her religion and so the differences just became too much for them and they they went their separate ways but she has so much love for Kadeem she always talks about him in a very positive light and so does he and he he made a couple cameos on R&B Divas where he was giving her advice on the type of men she should date they're really really close still and are great co-parents and she always said she still love him. She's just not in love with him. So Shantae then found love again and singer Kenny Lattimore. They welcomed the new year of 2002 with a private wedding ceremony in Jamaica. A year later, they were blessed with a son. However, the marriage couldn't stand the test of time. And on July 27, 2011, Shantae announced their separation on her Facebook page. Now, the thing with her and Kenny is that there are rumors about Kenny Lattimore's sexuality that he's not, you know is not you know <laughs> so she never spoke ill of him she always kind of evade those questions like well i'm not married to him anymore so i can't answer about his sexuality but it's a lot of those rumors out there and a lot of people that have stuff to say about that and there's also the rumors that he allegedly put hands on her but she's never spoken on this so we're not sure how true it is but one thing for certain she never has anything to say about that man she always just be like hey not my problem, not his wife anymore. Fast forward to October 26, 2021, when Shantae shared some exciting news with her fans. She was engaged to former BET executive Stephen G. Hill. The couple said their I do's in a beautiful ceremony in Los Cabos, Mexico, in October 22nd, 2022. A new chapter in Shantae's rollercoaster love life has begun, and I wish her nothing but happiness in this one. May this one last and be prosperous for her. Now let's talk about Diddy. Mm-hmm. Brace herself to be very upset because mm -mm. picture this it's 1999 the world is buzzing with y2k excitement and a fresh-faced actress named jennifer lopez is about to make her mark on the music scene her debut single if you had my love drops on may 4th and boom it explodes onto the charts like a supernova. This catchy tune isn't just a hit, it's a mega hit. It conquers the US Billboard Hot 100, reigning supreme for five whole weeks at number one on Billboard Hot 100. It sells over 1.2 million copies in the US alone, making it one of the top selling singles of the year. The song tops charts in Australia, Canada, Finland, Greece, Hungary, and New Zealand too. In the years that followed, If You Had My Love would be held as an R&B classic and one of J.Lo's best songs. Lopez's star shot up into the stratosphere, transforming her from a well-known actress to a pop sensation. The New York Daily News even said that this song made the world realize that J.Lo was something special. This song turned Jennifer Lopez into a household name. Fast forward to today, and If You Had My Love is still considered iconic. It's been held as one of J.Lo's greatest hits and one of the biggest songs of summer 99. But can you believe that this chart topping song was originally meant for Shantae Moore? Yep, you heard that right. According to Moore, P. Diddy heard the song, loved it, and had producers Rodney Jerkins create a similar version for Jennifer Lopez. 
In an interview with NPR's Tony Cox, Moore confessed she was so mad she wanted to sock him in the head. She explained Puffy walked in, heard my song, and said, I want that song. Rodney said it was already written for me. But Puffy said, again, I want that song. So Rodney wrote pretty much the same song for J-Lo and just tweaked a little bit of things. But it was like Shantae could no longer use the song, you know? And this wasn't the first time J-Lo was accused of stealing songs. She also been accused of ripping off Mariah Carey and, you know, Ashanti vocals. But hey, that's just show business for you. And J-Lo wasn't the one to do it. It was Puffy. You know, he's he was taking care of his girl at the time. So we can't really be too mad at her for that because she just didn't know. And Tommy Matola used her also to get back at Mariah. She was just kind of like a pawn too, but at some point you ask yourself and you guys can discuss in the comments, how do you feel? When do you take accountability for stealing from countless women of color? That's one, and just women in general. Can you keep saying, oh, it's not me, it's them. When you're profiting over it, you never speak on it. She never, till this day, I've never heard J-Lo speak on this or address this or take any form, like feel any sadness towards it. But I would be so upset if I was Shantae because this is a song that really shot J-Lo into the stratosphere. And everyone knows this song, right? It was so popular back then and it was supposed to be for Shantae. So can you imagine looking and being like, oh my goodness, this really could have been me. I can't believe he took this song from me. Now you just gotta watch this other woman steal your whole flow, your whole vibes. Ugh, I just would be so upset. Like, I can't even. And Diddy had a history of doing that for his artists, not caring at all. And who knows what intimidation tactics he used for the producers and the songwriters to get that song also. Cause he just said it again. Hey, I want that song. That's all he kept saying. Like. What you gonna do with Diddy who had goons and stuff, right? Even them, I'm kind of like understanding that they probably didn't have enough muscle to go back and forth with Diddy either. So Shantae just had to cut her losses. But yikes, that is so upsetting. But on a lighter note, Shantae is still fine, okay? She is aging like a fine vintage wine. On an interview with R&B Junkie, interviewer Terrence asked her, many have always wondered what's your beauty regimen for staying youthful in a sometimes exhausting industry such as yours. She responded, well, sleep is the first thing. Make sure you get enough rest as possible because it takes a lot to get your work, get your work included in your body. So I physically have to get a lot of sleep and I try to get as much as I can. Beauty wise, I make sure I wash my face every night, even if I don't wear makeup and I steam it and moisturize and drink some water and I just treat myself well, you know, go to the spa as often as possible and make sure that you are physically taking care of your vest of the vessel that you have because it's the last one you've got. This is it and you can't pollute it with too many things or it will give out on you. So you just take care of yourself. End quote. This queen deserves all her flowers. Leave a flower emoji in the comments for her and some kind words. Also check out some of her songs. She is very serious about her walk with God also and talks about Jesus a lot and even made some gospel songs. So who knows, maybe things didn't always work out in the industry as she planned because God was shielding and protecting her. Oftentimes when we feel what we feel our blessings are actually curses and traps, okay? So may she continue to be a positive voice and her smile never did. Him. Leave some flowers in the comment section for her. If you like the song you listen to, the link is in the description. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.